What's up everybody? Welcome back to another installment in my video series on iOS interview questions. If you haven't seen the overview video, I'll leave a link in the description. Go ahead and check that out. I run through all the questions I'm gonna go over with some brief answers. But this video is gonna be all about automatic reference counting and retain cycles. Now, first I'm gonna start off with a brief description of what automatic reference counting is, and then we're gonna dive into some code to go over some examples. All right, automatic reference counting. Now this is Apple's way of handling memory management of objects for you. Now what it's doing is for each object, it's keeping account of how many strong references are pointing to that object. For example, let's say I have a person class, Sean. There's also a camera class, a phone class, and a MacBook class. Now these classes can all have a strong reference pointing back to Sean. So automatic reference counting is gonna say that the count is four. So if I, even if I made Sean equal to nil to try to get rid of Sean from memory, automatic reference counting won't allow it. it. Sean will not be released from memory because there's three other objects pointing back to it. How do we fix that? We need to make those strong references a weak reference. So let's dive into some code and take a look at a real life example. Okay, let's do this. Uh, first, let me walk you through the basic setup. If you remember in the introduction, I talked about a person class, a camera class, a phone class, and a MacBook class. In order to simplify this coding example, we're just gonna deal with two other classes, the person and the MacBook, but it will still illustrate the point perfectly. So let me walk you through this person class, let you know what's going on here. Uh, a person gets initialized with a name and a MacBook. The MacBook is optional. You may not have a MacBook, maybe you like Windows, I don't know. And on lines 13 through 15, we have our dinit call. Now this only gets called when the object is actually released from memory. So this is gonna let us know when our object is clear from memory and we don't have a retain cycle, or if it doesn't get called, we do have a retain cycle. So you'll see this in action here in a little bit. And then the MacBook class is very similar. Uh, the MacBook has a name. Uh, the MacBook has an owner, which is a person object uh, up here, this class up here. On 24 through 27, it gets initialized with a name and an owner, which is the person object. And again, that's optional as well, just like the MacBook here for the person. And then same thing, the dinit, this gets called when the MacBook is released from memory. Okay, let's dive into some code. So the first thing we need to do on the left here is create our variables. So let's go ahead and create Sean. And Sean is of type person, and it's optional. And then var, uh, we're gonna call our MacBook Matilda. I have no reason why, just what I wanna call it. And that's optional as well. <clears throat> so we have our variables created. Uh, I'm just gonna break this up into functions. This obviously isn't a real app, but I'm gonna break it into functions just to separate the information. And hopefully that makes it easier to learn. So let's go ahead and create a function called create objects. And in here, we're gonna go ahead and initialize Sean and Matilda. So Sean equals person. And see our initializer method lets us autocomplete. So the name, name is gonna be Sean. And the MacBook right now is gonna be nil. I haven't gotten to the store yet to go buy it. So I don't have a MacBook yet. Uh, let's go ahead and create Matilda. She's sitting in the store waiting for me to buy her. Uh, so she's of type MacBook. And again, the initializer method lets us go ahead and give her the name. And the owner is nil. Haven't bought her yet. So there you go. So here's what we've created now. So just by creating these objects, as you can see in the image here, we have one strong reference. Sean has a reference to itself and Matilda has a reference to herself. You notice MacBook and owner are still nil. There's no references to each other there. So all good starting out. Let's go ahead and call this here just so when I run it, uh, stuff actually happens. And just to prove that we only have one reference and we can uh, de-init each other. So let's go ahead and just set Sean equal to nil and Matilda equal to nil. Go ahead and run it. So as you can see down here in the console, our de-init methods got called for both the MacBook and the person. So Sean is being de-initialized and Matilda is being de-initialized. So everything's working fine. No retain cycles here. Okay, let's go back up to create objects and get rid of us uh, nilling out uh, Sean and Matilda. Let's create another function called uh, assign properties. And what this is gonna do is now we're gonna create the strong references that are gonna cause trouble. This is gonna cause the retain cycle. So uh, let's go ahead and fix Sean.MacBook. I went to the store, bought my MacBook, and it is Matilda. And then Matilda now has an owner, and it's me, Sean. So there you go. So as you can see in this image, now we have strong references from Sean and Matilda pointing back and forth to each other, and this is the bad thing. This is the retain cycle. So Sean has a strong reference to itself, a strong reference to Matilda, but Matilda is actually pointing back to Sean now too with a strong reference. So back here in Assign Properties, let's go ahead and make Sean equal to nil. Now, uh, let's go ahead and make sure we call assign properties here at the top. Now, if you remember what I said in the intro, because there's an outside object pointing to Sean, in this case, Matilda.owner is pointing to Sean, Sean will not be removed from memory. And the reason is, is you only get removed from memory when the automatic reference count equals zero. So even though I got rid of Sean's strong reference to itself, 
there's still Matilda pointing to Sean, so there's still one left, so it's not gonna be deinitialized. So let's go ahead and run it to prove that. Okay, so it's running. Uh, you're just gonna have to trust me on that. My simulator's on another screen, nothing got printed out, so there's no way for you to know, but uh, trust me, it's running, and our dinit method over here in lines 13 and 14 of our person class is not getting called. And again, the reason is because there's still a strong reference pointing from Matilda to Sean, so Sean cannot be deinitialized. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, the fix for this is to make one of the variables weak. Uh, over here in our classes, uh, now this depends on how your data is structured. Uh, for this example, let's say the MacBook is the lesser important object. So we're gonna go ahead and make the MacBook the weak variable. So as you can see here on line 22, I made the owner variable, which is a person, weak. So now if you look at this updated image, you see Sean still has a strong reference to itself, it still has the strong reference to Matilda, but now there's no longer a strong reference pointing from Matilda to Sean. So now when I make Sean nil, he's able to be released from memory because Matilda's not holding on to him from the outside anymore. So let's go ahead and test that. Go ahead and run it. And as you can see in the console, now our dinit method for Sean is getting called and Sean is being deinitialized. So now let's double check something. Let, let's test out, uh, let's go ahead and print matilda.owner. Right, Sean is no longer in memory, Matilda should no longer have an owner. Let's go ahead and run that. So as you can see in the console, again, Sean is being deinitialized. So Sean's gone, he's away from memory, and now Matilda's owner is nil. Matilda no longer has an owner because Sean is gone. So we've cleared our retain cycle. And just for good measure, we can go ahead and set Matilda equal to nil as well now. Now that the Sean strong references don't exist, go ahead and run that just to double check. So as you can see, both Sean and Matilda can now be removed from memory, whereas before, when they had the strong references pointed back to each other, neither one of their strong reference counts would have ever gotten to zero, so they could have never been deallocated from memory. If you have a lot of these throughout your code, it really affects the performance of your app. So that's the gist of some basic automatic reference counting, memory leaks, retain cycles. If you watched the overview video, you notice I mentioned that the follow-up question to this is how do you handle this retain cycle in closures? Now, I didn't want to make this video too overwhelming for people just learning, so I'll definitely leave a link to some articles about uh, retain cycles and closures, and make sure you study up on that if you're preparing for interviews. If you found this at all useful, go and hit subscribe. More videos about iOS interview questions are on the way.